We've got to remember that at that time in the first century to the, the Jews, our spiritual ancestors were crying out for deliverance from this king. They're waiting for this prophecy because the Romans had come in about 60 BC, somewhere in there. The, Romans were, the Roman Empire was just taking over huge areas and the Romans had taken over the, the area of Israel and they're up, they were oppressed. They were oppressed people. They couldn't express their lives, their livelihoods, their faith like they wanted to. And so they're crying out to God, deliver us. Us, deliver us. Bring us a king. Bring us one who will deliver us. So there's this sense of hope building, the sense of expectation building right around the time when Jesus is born. Now, Jesus was uh, in the, what was expected was called a Messiah, and Jesus was called a Messiah. What, what does the word Messiah mean? It simply means anointed one, the anointed one. And the idea is that all kings were anointed by a prophet in one way or another. And usually the prophet would have a, a, a flask of oil that they would pour over the head. There would be words that would be said, and that person would then become the anointed one, the Messiah. And that's what we're looking for in Jesus. That's what we're awaiting. Now, when it came to Messiahs, they're in the first century. They're, they're waiting for that king, Messiah, to come. Some people are looking for, they're looking for a political leader, they're looking for a military leader. Somebody, this proposed king, this Messiah would come, build an army, and kick the Romans out, utterly defeat the Romans. And there were people called zealots that couldn't wait for that Messiah to arrive so they could sign up and be a part of that army. In fact, it was most people that believed that. And, and they, so they were confused by Jesus. I mean, they, they saw Jesus. They saw His power. They saw His miracles. They saw his ability to draw a crowd and like, this could be the guy who could raise up the army because other people had tried to be so-called messiahs and raise up armies and the Romans just crushed them. But like, this Jesus could be the guy. But there was a problem. It's like Jesus didn't seem to have any interest at all in raising up an army. The guy never even carried a sword. So they, they saw his power, his miracles, his wisdom, but how could he be the messiah? Lots of people, including the disciples, were waiting for that military Messiah, and he frustrated them. I mean, one of the things that really frustrated them was because Jesus did things like healed the children of the Roman centurions. He, he didn't talk about Romans as being the enemies. In fact, he said, Rome is not the enemy. In fact, he's like, take your eyes off of Rome. He said, put your eyes on God. When you put your eyes on God, everything else falls into place. That's not what those people wanted to hear. They were expecting a political, military Messiah. The people expecting a priest were disappointed too in Jesus because when they saw Jesus do his miracles, when they heard Jesus speak, they're like, yes, this is the guy. When they saw the crowds rally around him and said, this could be the priestly king that we're looking for that will restore ritual, that will restore purity to us. Jesus is the one until Jesus started hanging out with the wrong people. Jesus spent time with prostitutes. He spent time with lepers. He spent time with sinners, tax collectors. These are the worst of the worst of the worst of Jewish society, and he spent time with them. So these people that are looking for a priestly Messiah are like, he's not doing it our way, because somebody that was a, a truly priestly Messiah would not hang out with those kinds of people. He was disappointed. He was a disappointment to them. The prophecies had been made in the Old Testament. People were expecting a king. They're looking for Elijah to back it up and prepare the way. The people are waiting and ready. Jesus is born, but it just doesn't happen the way it needs to happen. 